Hey guys, in today's video, we're talking about how to create high quality raw HDR photos using your camera in Adobe Lightroom. Now, before you say, I already know how to do that and close this video, you might want to hang around a little longer because this technique I'm about to show you consists of a little more than what initially meets the eye and it delivers the best HDR photos that can come out of your camera. I've spoken about dynamic range in a previous video and its significance in both motion and still picture. If you aren't aware of what dynamic range does for your photos, then you should probably check that video out before watching this. Now let's talk about getting those raw HDR photos. Personally, I shoot micro four thirds for a majority of the pictures I take. And one of the issues I've come across with the system is the dynamic range. Simply put, you aren't going to be getting the best dynamic range out there on a micro four thirds system. And that's simply one of the trade-offs you have to live with when going for a compact camera system. I've been hugely disappointed after a long day of shooting that I upload the images into my Lightroom library and there are some highlights turned to complete white or shadows that are unforgivingly crushed. A general rule of thumb in photography is that highlights tend to be less forgiving in comparison to shadows. So it's always a good practice to underexpose your image to protect your highlights, then pull the shadows up in post. However, that always introduces unwanted noise into your image. But it's better than having highlights that have turned to complete white, which leaves them pretty much unrecoverable. The problem lies in that I always find myself stuck between trying to protect my highlights, but still trying really hard to get reasonable exposure in those shadows. It's almost like you have to pick one over the other which always leaves something to be desired in the final image. An easy way to get incredible dynamic range without stretching your shadows too much and ultimately losing image quality is by making use of exposure bracketing. Exposure bracketing is a simple feature built into your camera that allows you to specify a number of pictures for your camera to take at different exposures. So for example, three pictures with a difference of one exposure value between each, which can be used for HDR in post. It's a very useful feature that almost every camera with manual controls has, but it's also one that is underused and rarely taken advantage of. So I'm going to jump into Lightroom now and run you through the entire process. Before you shoot, you want to figure out what exposure bracketing you're going to use. You usually have the options of about three to nine images, ranging from a third to one full exposure value difference between them. You also want to make sure you're shooting in raw format for the best results. Now, of course, not all scenarios will require nine images, and it all depends on how much dynamic range you're trying to pull out. The most challenging situations will most likely require as many images as your camera can manage, and preferably the largest EV difference between them. So we're in Lightroom now, and I've already imported my images. This is a picture I took of my backyard from indoors, and you can see that it's quite a tricky shot to expose. I used 9-shot exposure bracketing at 1 EV difference in this demonstration. Now if we expose only for the highlights, this is what the image will look like. You can see that all the highlights are accommodated for, but the shadow areas are completely crushed. I can try to pull the shadows up in Lightroom, but notice how quickly we start to get noise and strange discoloration this picture really wouldn't be usable. And conversely, if we expose for the shadows alone, you can see that the highlights are completely blown to white. You can see in the histogram over here that there's little to no recoverable information there. And again, even if I pull the highlights down, the final image would still leave a lot to be desired. At a standard exposure of zero EV, we can also see that the image is very dark. The camera tries its best to find the middle ground between shadows and highlights, and in this case, it preserves a lot of highlights. However, just like before, as soon as we start to play with the shadows, the image falls apart very quickly. And if you look at the top right corner, there's some noticeable highlights clipping. So I have my 9 shots here, and basically all you want to do in Lightroom is highlight them all, then right click and go to Photo Merge, HDR. Lightroom will start to merge the pictures, and sometimes this can take a while. Once it's done, you notice that it'll display a preview of an HDR image. You can mess about with some of the options to see what works best for you, but I usually just leave auto tone on. If you're shooting handheld, then it might be useful to use the auto align feature as well. I'll leave it checked off in this case because I shot on a tripod. So click merge and you'll be returned to the Lightroom workspace. Again, it might take a little time, but once it's done, you'll notice how a new image appears at the very right of your photos. This is your raw HDR file. Lightroom will save it as a digital negative file or DNG. If you right click on it and go to show in finder, we can see here that each of our bracketed shots were about 20 megabytes in size. 
Our HDR file on the other hand has a size of 82 megabytes, so a whole lot of data is preserved for you to work with. Back in Lightroom, from here onwards, you simply just have to touch up on your photo just like you do any other image until you get the desired outcome, and you're done. The final image is definitely better than using a single shot. I can make out the writing on the man photo bag on the floor, and I can even make out the colors on the tripod. Our highlights are nicely exposed and we have very little to no clipping. So there you have it folks, that is how you can create high quality HDR RAW files using Adobe Lightroom and exposure bracketing. Now you could argue that why not just use your camera's built-in HDR function, however in a lot of the cases, built-in HDR modes on cameras deliver the images in JPEG which give you limited latitude to work with in post. You also don't have control on how much dynamic range you want or how little of it. It's a mode that generally cannot be used on a professional level because of how unpredictable it can be. Thanks for watching and I hope that this video has been useful to you. Please leave a like or a comment and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as turn on notifications for more videos like this. Catch you folks in the next one.